So this is a picture of me taken shortly after one of my data modeling assignments, very early in my career. And it was right before my annual employee review. You know how it works. You sit down once a year with your manager, and he or she gives you things to work on. They talk about your projects for the year, and they talk about usually there's one or two areas where they'd like to see improvement. So my manager went through all of my projects with me for the year. Steve, you did good here. You did great here. And then it was quiet in a room. And I realized, OK, this is where that constructive feedback is going to happen. And the only comment she made to me was, Steve, you need to feel the data more. You need to feel the data more. How do you feel data? That constructive feedback, I had no clue how to implement. How do you feel data? But years later, looking back at that advice, you need to feel the data more, I realized feeling the data is really what we do in data modeling. We are the ones who analyze the data, we document it, we communicate it. We are the feelers of the data. That's all about data modeling. So I'm Steve Hoberman. I started my data modeling career when I was about 12 years old. I was a very big baseball card collector. And with the help of my dad, I built a database of my baseball card collection. I was able to use the IBM punch card machines in his office, and I created an IBM punch card, a record, for each player that I had. And I was able to find duplicate players, players I needed to complete sets. That was my first experience feeling the data. When I graduated college, I joined Bell Labs in New Jersey, and I was on a team, a data modeling think tank team, with the top data modelers of the time, and we built a data model of the entire phone industry. I then went to work on Wall Street for a number of years and spent a little under 10 years with a candy company, all doing data modeling. And the last decade or so, doing a lot of consulting and writing books and training. So first, take a step back and think what a model is. What a model is, is a picture of a landscape. You can imagine a map being a model of a geographic landscape. You could imagine an org chart being a model of an organizational landscape. You could imagine a data model being a model of an information landscape. And what the data model and the org chart and the map have in common is that we're only dealing with a few symbols. And once you know how to read those symbols, you could read any model. There is no room for ambiguity. I could look at this map of Manhattan and know where the streets are, know where the water is. And what's amazing about how our brains work is we can look at a model of something, even when that something looks nothing like the real world, and know it represents the real world. Our brains are good at looking at things and know they represent something a lot more complex. We can look at the water around Manhattan and know it's water, even if it's not crystal clear or blue water around Manhattan. It could be gray, it could be things polluted in it, things floating in it, but we know it represents the water. We know the streets are not 100% parallel or perpendicular in Manhattan, but we know by looking at the map where the streets are. We know in an org chart that Jack is not a rectangle, he is a person, but we know it represents Jack. So the word represents is very important in modeling. It gives us the ability to look at very simple pictures and know it represents something a lot more complicated. We can look at all the information in our organization. So maps are models of landscapes, which are simple pictures which represent something a lot more complex. Once readers speak the language, they can discuss the content. It's an extremely important property of any model. So once you know what the symbols mean and how to read it, you can jump right in and start discussing whether it's right or not. We don't have to invest time and energy trying to first understand what the model is saying and then see if it's right or not. We all know how to read the model. There's only one way to read it. We can jump right in and debate whether it's correct. It's separating semantics from syntax. The data model gives us this precise syntax, and then we can jump in and discuss the semantics. And precision is that key word. It's the most important property of any model is precision. It gives us the ability to use a few symbols and represent something that can only be read, interpreted one way, and then 
could be discussed. Okay. It's actually how we spread knowledge. We, we do something new for the first time, like we interview a business area or we elicit requirements or we analyze a database. And once we put it in the form of a data model, there's only one way to read it, and therefore the people that come after us can use the model we created and build upon it. And that's how we get knowledge. We build on other people's work. And a model is a great medium for that. For example, to show the power of precision, so we publish books, and if somebody told me books can be ordered, I would know what that meant. However, I can't model that statement. I can't model that statement because it's not precise. In order to build a data model based on that statement, lots of questions have to get answered first. For example, can a book appear on more than one order? Can an order reference more than one book? Can a book exist if no one's ever ordered it? Can an order exist without any books? What's an order? What's a book? And other questions too. And once all those questions get answered, then we can build the data model. And the data model is precise because once we build it using these symbols, there's only one way to read everything on that model. You may argue with me over whether it's right or not, but that's a different argument. We all read the model the same way, and then we can discuss whether it's correct. That's the power of modeling. And because it's so powerful, it can be used in lots of different areas. So a data model is a precise representation of an information landscape. And during a recent hike, I've been thinking about the value of data modeling. And I realized we do data modeling because of this, this one sentence. We build data models to confirm and document our understanding of other people's perspectives. A data model is nothing more than a communication tool, very powerful communication tool. Because you can imagine if you're building a piece of software, think about all the people involved in building that software. You have the business sponsor who's paying for the software. You have the business users, the business experts, business analysts, data analysts data modelers, data architects, developers, trainers, support people, people who deploy the application, and so on. So it's a very high opportunity. Somebody's going to explain something, and someone else may misinterpret it, kind of like a very large game of telephone, where remember when you were kids, you would whisper a secret into somebody's ear, and it would work its way around the room, and by the time it comes out the other side of the room, it sounds completely different. Same thing with a lot of our requirements. Somebody whispers a requirement, and by the time it gets developed, we have a system that doesn't do exactly what they were hoping it would do. Data models designed to prevent that because there's only one way to read everything on the model. So you can use data modeling in lots of different areas. The most common is forward engineering, building a data model from requirements down. Forward engineering means get the requirements, do the modeling. Most of our data modeling assignments from years ago were all forward engineering. We were busy automating a lot of human tasks. Today, though, a lot of our projects are reverse engineering, looking to understand something we already have. You may think reverse engineering is simply looking at systems that are 30 years, 40 years old and replacing them with newer systems. And in some cases, that's true. But I could tell you, based on a lot of my experiences, that reverse engineering could also be trying to understand a system that was recently built, but maybe not built with proper documentation, proper modeling. And therefore, eventually, we have to support the system or integrate the system with other systems or fit it within some kind of enterprise architecture, so we need to understand it. And that's where reverse engineering comes in. If the model was not built the first time an application is designed, it eventually gets built after the fact, usually for a much higher cost of time and energy. Modeling is a great tool to manage risk because if you're working on a large project and you have people working in different silos, what the data model lets you do is take a step back and understand the map. The data model is your map. A lot of times in our organizations, we focus on business process. How do you enter an order? How do you process a trade? How do you enter customer information? Those are all processes which are very important. But just like the GPS in your car, if you follow directions, make a right here, make a left here, turn around when possible, that's also a process. What's lacking is the knowledge of your surroundings, 
The data model is that knowledge. You can take a step back from all these business processes, how to process an order, what's a customer, how to, how to create a trade, take a step back and realize, well, what's a customer? What's an order? What's their relationship? And that's the data model. That's the power of modeling, is creating that map. And once you have that map, it minimizes your risk because you have control, you have understanding over your data. It's also a great tool just to understand the business. Without even needing to build a new application, if you share with me a data model of your area, I could read it, like reading a book, and I could learn about the business. In fact, many of my assignments start off with a simple question, can I see your data models? And then when I move on to another assignment, I use those data models as an education tool. That's the medium I use to explain the content, the business value. And somebody once said, modeling is a tool for coping with problems of largeness. And in data modeling, there's different kinds of data models. Conceptual, logical, physical. Each one solves a problem. The conceptual model creates a business need and solves a business need. The logical presents the business solution and the physical, the technical solution. I love the analogy with taking a photograph. We often start off with identifying a need for the photograph. Gee, don't they look cute together? Or I always want to remember this. And then once we understand the need, we compose our solution. That's my dog, Daisy. We take a picture of what we want. And then after taking the picture, there are a lot of technical settings that get recorded most of us don't care about, like the speed of the film, whether we use the flash, what's your depth of field, and so on. That same analogy works well with data modeling. My first step is to build the conceptual, which just like the photograph, represents my need, helps me scope applications. Then I solve the problem. I build the logical. That is my business solution. Here's what I want my application to do. It captures all of the business requirements correctly. And then, once I create my business solution, now what I do is I create my technical solution. I determine, okay, how do I, how do I make the solution work with my tools, my databases, my reporting tools? How do I get really fast speeds and save space and so on? So with data modeling, we go from a business need in the conceptual to a business solution in the logical to a technical solution in the physical. And that's the power of modeling.